There we go. So let us talk about the integral. Before going over the integral of a vector field, we need to talk about the integral as we move along different paths. I'm going to start by giving you one example. Before writing the formula, the example says calculate the integral. What is the integral? The integral of 2 cos. Here we have x squared y. And then here we have ds. over curve C, where C is defined to us as unit circle, upper half unit circle, upper half unit circle. Very well. So what is S? S is the length of this circle. Length. So what do we have here? We have integral of a function and we are moving along a path, which in this case is a curve, upper half circle, and we want to know what is this integral with respect to variable s, s is the length of this curve. When it comes to integrals like this, we have a nice formula. The formula says, let's write down the formula here for you. The line integral is defined as the integral of a function like f of x and y, f of x and y, ds over curve c. So we are walking over curve c. It is not just an interval. It's not just a nice plane. Here, you are moving along a curve. You're walking over a curve and you want to calculate the integral is equal to so to calculate this integral it is equal to well here we need to find the relation between x c with respect to c and y with respect to c it is equal to f of f of we need to define a third variable because we have one integral. It's not iterated integral, guys. F of x with respect to variable t and y with respect to variable t. Y with respect to variable t times the length. The length, which is square root of the derivative of x with respect to t squared plus the derivative with respect to t squared times dt. So see what I did. And here, your t is bounded between k. Okay. Very well. So what I did, 
I have a function in X and Y, and I have a curve. This is the curve, whatever that curve is. This is your curve C. Of course, it has a length, all right? To find the line integral of this function over this curve, we're going to define X and Y in terms of a third variable like T. So this is the formula and this is the example that we have. What is my C? C is the upper half, upper half unit circle. This is my C. So if I want to think about C, C behaves like this. This is my C. Upper half unit circle, one and negative. How did we define unit circle? How did we use the third parameter like theta or t to define unit circle? X is equal to R cosine t cosine theta. Y is R sine t sine theta. So we can define X in terms of a third variable and Y in terms of a third variable. Remember that in this case, R is just one. Your T for a unit circle is bounded between zero and five. So to calculate this line integral, we need to introduce a new variable. We just did. We introduced X in terms of T and Y in terms of T. So wherever I see X, I write R, which is one, cosine t, and instead of y, I write sine t. Step by step, we break this integral down into measurable pieces to calculate this line integral. We write x in terms of t. You're right. Y in terms of T. We already know how to write this down. We learned it before. Already know this. So my X is cosine T. My Y is sine T. Now substitute. This becomes the integral, two plus x squared, x is cosine t, plus cosine squared t times y. What is y? Sine t. So let's write this guy next to each other. Sine t. What is the next component? The next component is the length of this curve. What is the length of this curve? Times square root of, so square root of dx dt, the derivative of x with respect to t. dx dt is negative sine t. Sine t dy dt is cosine t. So here we have negative sine t squared plus cosine t squared. T. And we know that t or the angle changes between zero and pi. Zero so this integral becomes an integral in one variable that we can easily calculate. So this integral is now zero to pi two plus well sine cosine squared t times sine t, and this is equal to one. You already know that 
times d. This becomes integral 0 to pi 2 dt plus integral 0 to pi cosine squared t sine t dt. Here we can use u sub. So this becomes 2 times pi plus integral. You can say that, hey, my u is cosine. My du is negative sine dt. So here we get, well, I have negative u squared, negative cosine to the third of t divided by 3 t ranges between 0 to pi. So this guy becomes 2 pi minus a third. Well, if I plug in pi into cosine, I get negative 1 to the third, negative 1 minus, well, what I have here, if I plug in 0 for my cosine, let me write this right now, the whole thing, negative 1 to the third minus 0 to the third. We want this to be in the same line. So this becomes 2 pi minus minus 2, which is 2, oops, 2, just 1, 1 minus minus 2 times. Very well. Give us another example. So this is our line integral. That's the formula that we are using. And now we're going to use, we're going to go over another example. How do we use this formula? So this line integral says, hey, evaluate, evaluate the line integral of x minus 2y squared dy over curve c, and c is and C is the arc or part of the parabola is the arc of parabola y equals x squared from negative 2, 4 to 2, 1, 1. 1 and 1. Well, so what do we have here? We have one integral of a function that has two variables. To calculate an integral like this, we need to get rid of one of these variables. Well, you might say, hey, I want to get rid of x or I want to get rid of y. Well, we have to find a relation between x and y. Do we have a relation between x and y? Well, here you can say that I can't find a relation between x and y without using t. I don't need t anymore. Why is that? Because x is connected to y, and I'm taking the integral with respect to y. y is equal to x squared. And then I can calculate dy, which is 2x dx. So note that in this integral, we have two 
variables, x and y. They have to get rid of one of them. Since y is equal to x squared, then dy is equal to 2x dx. Substitute all into this integral. Into the integral. So your integral becomes the integral x minus 2y is x squared raised to the second power and dy is 2x dx. 2x dx. But what is the change in your x? x is bounded between negative 2 to 1. x is bounded between negative 2 to 1. Well, I have an integral in one variable. Integral in one variable. which is easy to calculate. So what do we get? We get integral negative two to one, x minus two x to the fourth. Then I'm going to distribute two x dx. This becomes integral negative two to one, two x squared minus four x to the fifth dx, which is easy to calculate. This gives me two thirds x to the three, negative two to one minus four over six, x to the six, negative two to one. Well, after calculation, we're going to have 48. You can just substitute these two thirds, one to the third minus two thirds, negative two to three, and then here we have minus four over six, one to the six minus negative two to the power six, which is equal to 48.